Hi there. In this video, we're going to be going over a certain um, mystery problem here. And basically, in this mystery problem, we see that we have a for loop that will run through a list itself. It will increase its size by plus equals two. It will say, it will declare an integer element that will basically be um, the element that we're getting at the position of i. We're going to say, okay, let's remove i and then let's add that element after we've removed i. So basically we're going to add the element to the very back of the list here. And then once we break out of our for loop here, we want to print out the list itself. So um, let's start off with a couple of examples. Let's say that we have the following list. Two, not three, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Clearly not me. Uh, anyways, uh, this is going to be our first list. This is going to be our base problem. We're going to call it one. So this is what we've got here. We've got this. We've got this array list two, four, and six. And basically, what we want to do is we want to call upon. Let's call it. Let's just say for some reason this is called list. Um, we want to say mystery. Uh, we want to call upon mystery of our list itself and we're assuming that this is an array list of integers. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, let's go through this ever so slowly. So we first got the um, list 2, 4, um, 6, and then we got an 8. Clearly my computer doesn't appreciate me. Okay, so this is what we got at the very start of the list here. Now, what happens when we go through this? So, the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at our size. And in this case, when we call upon list.size, we say, all oh, right, so we have one element, two elements, three elements, four elements. So we know that our size is going to be equivalent to four. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to start counting from zero and we're gonna go up to three. We're not actually gonna hit four, we're going through zero base indexing here. Um, now, we get to this point here. Um, it says int element is equivalent to list.get at i. When we first enter this for loop, we're starting at zero, so we're saying element is equivalent to basically list.get at the point zero. Now, what is that equivalent to? Well, because we're dealing with zero base indexing when we work with arrays here, we see that the two is at position zero, the four is at position one, the six is at position two, and the eight is at position eight. So if we look at the zero, um, at the zero here, we see that the value there is two. So list.get the zero is two, and in turn, element becomes two itself. Now we get to this point here. Um, list.remove of i. What this is going to do is this is going to say, okay, um, the position i is equivalent to zero, and that is going to hold a two. So we're removing that two from the list, so our list ends up looking something along the lines of this. Um, four, six, yeah, <laughs> struggling, and eight not nine, eight. There we go. Um, and we notice at this point our list size does change, so the list size at this point is going to be equivalent to three. But notice that right after this call we have a calling on list.add of element. And at this point we know that our element integer is equivalent to the value of two from what we previously extracted before. So when we call upon list.add, we're going to add the two to the very back of the list. So we end up getting something along the lines of four, six, eight, and then two. And notice that our uh, list.size is again going to go back to four. Now, looking at this here, so our first run, um, I is starting at zero. Now, 
once we've reached this last part here of list.addElement, we then go back through the loop and we start going against our test case here. So at this second test, we're saying i is now going to start at plus equals 2, basically means 0 plus 2, which is just equivalent to 2. So 2 is now i, and so i is 2 here, and we check to see if 2 is less than our list.size. Now, we said that our list size was 3, but then we added the element back, so our list size started at 4 again. So, what we're saying is, is 2 less than 4? Well, clearly yes. I mean, unless you're working in some kind of abstract world, then, you know, if it's opposite day or something along the lines of that, then yes, 2 is less than 4. So, we enter this for loop again, and at this point, we're saying, in element equals list.getItI. Now at this case, we know that i is equal to 2. So we're not going to be calling upon list.getIt0. We're going to say list.get at 2. Now at this point, we know that our list looks something along the lines of this. 4, 6, 8, and 2. So because we're dealing with zero-based indexing here, Remember, the second element is not, or the element at i is equal to 2 is actually not the second element of the list. It actually ends up being the third element of the list. So we're looking at the 8 here. So what we're going to do is when we call upon this method here, i is equal to 2, which will then in turn point at the element 8 in the list. So what we end up doing is we cut out the 8, and we actually just have 4, 6, and 2. And then yet again, the list size is equivalent to 3. But then because we stored, oops, that is not supposed to be a 2. Because we stored an 8 in the uh, local variable element here, and we want to add the element back in, we know that element is equivalent to 8. So we're going to be adding the 8 to the very back of the um, list itself. So then we end up getting 4, 6, 2, and 8. Now. We then go back to here, and we go back to our test here. We increment i by 2, and this time i is equivalent to 4. And we test to see, is 4 less than 4? Well, clearly no, because, you know, if, if, it was, if 4 is equivalent to 4. Unless we're looking at decimals, like 4.0001, is that less than 4.0002? In that case, that would be true, but in this case, because we're dealing with just whole numbers themselves, uh, the test fails, and we break out of our for loop here, and then we go down to this println statement. And it's basically going to say, okay, uh, what are we going to print? Well, we're going to print our list, and our list is given up here, 4, 6, 2, and 8. Anyhow, that's um, how we handle this sort of mystery problem, and I'll see you guys in the next video.